connect here. Okay, I'm gonna end this one. Well, hello and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Well, okay, sweet. Now I'm only in one place and this is so good. This is so much better, right? Uh, yay. Okay. Hey, Marilou, is this a better connection? Let me know if this is a better connection. And okay. So for those of you who just uh, jump ship from that one to this one, I so much better. Thank you. Yay. Technology, technology. I guess everybody is using some kind of a technology nowadays and um ah oh, i love this i love this technology and learning for those of you who do not know me i'm lisa bubari your uh expert hypnotherapist stress management so we started by asking questions and my question was to you since i had an email last night asking me for help and what she wanted to know was for me to give her tips in how to cope with being in such proximity with her husband two kids and they have three dogs and you know I want to present that same question to you because the tips that I gave may not be the same as for you as you know, there are so many of us right now that are cooped up uh, in our home and everything, and we need to come up with ways to have me time. Me time to not only breathe, be me time to uh, have our privacy, because we all need that privacy, right? So, so much better is um, how do you cope with your loved ones being together day in, day out. And I realized one thing, there is so much to be grateful. Are you taking this time to bond together and learn from one another? Or is this time becoming much harder and you are more at each other? And that is my question to you. I would love to see what your answers are because I want to explore this. I want to know how are we doing it so I can help others. And then I want to bring value by giving you some uh, pointers. So please do share and let me know what your thoughts are. What do you believe it's the way that you do that it's beneficial. Are you bonding or are you more at each other? Okay, so that's one. Number two, the question is, and if you're all together with children, how are you may uh, benefiting from this time? I still, I sit alone in my room, take a walk, sit in the backyard beautiful and you have created such a beautiful backyard that it's like it's like there is the healing corner there is the music corner there is the lounging corner ask for space and boundaries communication for certain exactly and that's one of my tips it's the same way that we ask permission for things we need to also give each other permission to have the me time. Because if we were not cooped up at home together, we would be saying, I'm leaving to go wherever it is. But the same permission and respect ought to be given, especially nowadays. And the respect is, I respect you for your time and I want the same respect. And by giving that permission to each other, 
that's truly giving each other the permission to grow and yet bond. So with children, it comes the same thing because they're home all the time and sometimes they can be bored. And there are times, especially nowadays, because they are being homeschooled, they need mom's attention more often. And this was the scenario at night that my uh, client was asking me. My husband works. He wants peace and quiet. My children, when he wants the peace and quiet because he works in the afternoons, my children study in the morning and the schooling is in the morning. How can I, I'm, I'm the in-between person and I'm pulling my hair. So with frustration, nothing can happen. But today I learned something that if you have not watched, for those of you who have children, by all means, I was just on a networking uh, meeting that Caleb Maddox, Caleb Maddox, C-A-L-E-B, this 18-year-old kid has become a phenomenal in helping children become th uh, thriving, becoming better, having self-esteem, and just by learning in different ways. It's not a cookie cutter, but expanding their mind. So by expanding their mind means expanding by questions because our mind, we know that children from the age of zero to seven are like sponges. We just take in, take in, take in. That's why children constantly ask questions. What's this? What's that? What's this? What's that? Why are you doing this? And I know for those who have children, younger children, and it can be annoying, especially if we're all cooped up together. But what if that annoyance happens to be the exact thing that they need from you today? And it doesn't matter if they're children younger, but children to the point of teenagers. Because teenagers think, you don't understand me. You're much older. You don't understand what I'm going through. You don't understand what I'm feeling. You just don't understand because you're not on the same page. And they need to chat with their friends and whatever it is that they're doing, right? But what if we take this time and create this arena for them that you bond by asking them questions? And I loved what he said. His biggest mentor and the person who helped him be who he is was his father. So in a way, when it's, when the father came home, he literally shut all phone, everything got shut down and it became family time. No computers, no phones, no TV, no nothing. And you can do the same thing. When it's, work time and your husband or you have to work, allow that time and ask them for the same thing. I need three hours to work. And after three hours, we will be together for one hour. And in this one hour, my full attention is on you. And then I have to work another three hours or four hours, whatever. And the same thing goes with your loved one, if it is your uh, husband at home or everything. Once we compartmentalize, then everybody knows this is the time that is dedicated for me. This is dedicated for uh, TV time. This is dedicated for work time. So in a way, in one household, we come to honor each other's space. And if we all take a corner, the same thing as because at home my mom watches TV or she's cooking or whatever, I left the house and I came here in my office where no one is here except me and you. But not everybody can get out and go to a place that no one is there. 
but we can make that same thing at home. One of the beautiful things, the questions that I ask my clients, you know, as a therapist, I have to ask them, what is it that they want in life? What is it that they want when they want to, uh, let's say they come in and say, I need help with my self-esteem. I need help with losing weight or stop smoking or my anxiety. But what is your goal? What is it that you want to create? Once you have that, then what? And we can ask children the same things. When they ask you why, be curious of their why. Because now they are curious. So when you are having time, either with your husband, ask them a question. With your lover, ask them a question. They love you. They say they love you. Why? What about me do you love? What about me irritates you? What about what I say, what I do, or I don't like the way you snore? That I cannot help. But if it is something, even snoring, we can help. Hey, I'm a hypnotherapist. I can help you enjoy their snoring and every time you listen to them snore you go deeper and deeper into sleep believe it or not it can be done so the snoring is no longer something that becomes an irritation but the snoring becomes like a pendulum that takes you into a deeper state of sleep so there is always something that we can find that what used to be an irritation, becomes either a source of motivation or null and void. You see, in life, things either enhance who we are or they deter us. If something is a determined, find out how is it a deterring factor for you and what about you has become worse or declined. So become very clear, so clear about how that situation being confined is not working for you. And then have a conversation. This is, and it's not about judging, it's not about accusing or blaming because we're all in the same boat. My first question today was, how is being together confined in the same place, working for you, or has become a, uh, you're on top of each other and negative? And that is by being clear, let me say this, for 32 years, I lived by myself. After I got divorced, I lived by myself. All through this time, I was not in a relationship to live with anyone else. So I got so comfortable in my ways, right? I would come home. I had my own routine. Uh, if I wanted to speak to someone, I would get on the call or speak, or it was just me, my dog. I could sleep anytime. When I had events, I would work until three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, I would be on the computer. There was no one to tell me otherwise. So I was my own boss. The way I would wake up, how I would sleep, the way, that's it. There was no routine. I was I created my routine unless someone was invited to my home. Living with my mother changed the entire dynamic. Although she says this is your home because it's just me and her and my dog, Winston, it's still her home and I am living with her. And the dynamic of when I get up, 
uh, the routine has changed. Uh, having coffee, if I do it by myself, she says, well, why do you need your time instead of having coffee with me? Can't you spend that time with me? So I had to adjust my time to be with her. And then having adjustment of so many things, when I come, when I go, not that I need permission, but she is not worried because now she sees when I come, when I go. So now being confined, even coming to my office today to have my space to do the coaching, being live, and the coaching that I did two hours before this, it was, why are you going? So I love when children, loved ones, seniors start questioning and our response. It's not that they are judging. They are asking so they know. That in itself became the biggest light bulb for me. So instead of being offended that you're asking all these questions, I never had anyone question me. It's not that she's asking questions because she's, she wants to restrain me or to uh, judge me or to criticize me, but it was for her to know, to understand. You see, I think this is the same thing with children. We think that they become annoyance where they just want to know because it's curiosity. They don't know and you become their source of knowledge. The biggest thing I got away from Caleb and I want all of you who have children, especially moms, Chris, and so many who homeschool your children, check out Caleb Maddox. Caleb, C-A-L-E-B Maddox. This 18-year-old has become the biggest source of motivation for children so they can think outside of the box. Watch his videos. He's going to have a training, a master training for children that enhances who they are by questions. And he said, when my dad, when I would come home every day from school, my dad would put away his phone and for the duration of half an hour or one, ever, or one hour, ask me questions, how I feel, how was school, who did I help today? What did I learn from one teacher or another student? What did I get out of being in school? So all these questions is to explore your children. And what if you can do the same thing? Even when we are confined, and ask questions about how they feel being with you. How they feel being away from their friends. What are the connections they miss? So those Q and A's that can enhance, not only for you to learn from them, but also for them to know that you are more interested in them than their grades or what is it that they are doing. I learned that by asking my clients the why questions. Yes, I want to drop the weight. Why? If you get the ideal weight, how will it enhance your life? that is going to be better than now. Well, it's going to make me healthier. The one who said, I want to stop smoking because I want to become healthier. Well, 
all your life you've known for the last 10 years, 15 years, 18 years, you've known that it does, it deters your health. Why now versus then? Why today? So those why questions that touches the heart is so more powerful than asking them to go somewhere. And that in itself is why. So mutual respect. Another thing he said was, they had this game. I love this. I think this game is the best game between if I can do this, even with my mom, living with someone at home, common courtesy and respect is a must. There will be curiosity, questioning, asking. Exactly. Yes, Gem E. And not only with children, not only with loved ones, but our friends, friends that we care about. You know, there are so many friendships that are, we've been friends for so long and friends, shallow questions about movies, about the new trend or something. But so many friends really don't really know each other because they don't do the hard questions. They think if I ask this hard question or this sensitive question, they may get offended. But is it offending that person or wanting to know more about them because you care about them? And I think that is the curiosity. We are human beings that are curious about everybody is sending messages about this uh, coronavirus. Uh, everyone is sending messages about this politician said that this person is doing this. That person is wrong. What if we stop blaming and asking the curious questions, even sharing it with your friends, especially your children? Do they know in case of emergency, in case anything happens with you other than 911, who is the person that you trust for them to call? In case of emergency that something happens at home, who would you want to go to? Who is your go-to person that will safeguard your children, safeguard you? Who is the one person that you trust and they don't know? Those are the questions that you need to have. And it's a dialogue to open up. And it's learning from one another. You say, I talk about evoking what was because it is our history. Our history is something that has brought us to here. But the decision that you make today of what you want your life to look like, feel like, be like, and thrive from this day forward is up to you. And that is the relationship. That's the hard questions, the curiosity questions. Ask them. Be curious about what they feel, even with everyone in the house. And do they like you more? How do they see you? What do they believe is your strengths and your weaknesses? That in itself can be a game, a learning game about each other. And please make sure that you put all the blames, all the judgments, everything aside. This is not the time for that. And when someone says, don't jump to correct them because it's their opinion. And respect their opinion. And once they are done, then share with them. Is this how you see me? Is this how I come across? Because sometimes 
how you perceive yourself is not the same thing as what they see. Long time ago, bless his soul, my father used to speak very loud. And my mom would say, calm down. Now she speaks loud. And I say, mom, I'm right here. You can speak a lower volume. And she says, I'm speaking normal. So it's all perception, right? And I am not making any judgment. I'm just saying perception. And that is the most beautiful thing because we all have a different perception. And that can become more clear by communicating. Not talking over each other, but sharing and communicating. So I guess in a way, today's, today's message is, let us respect each other's space, honor one another, because we're all in the same boat. Learn how to share and communicate and be kinder. Now I would like to find out how are you doing? I think it helps to establish your particular space so there are no questions. Well, yes, I think that is a true, uh, true statement. Thank you for that. And I love what Edith says, Gem E, um, which I have a lot of respect for. You know, nowadays in this community, there are so many children that have not learned ethics, etiquette, not ethics, etiquette. Uh, where I come from, it's respecting the elderly that this new generation says, why do they need my respect? It is earned. So it's a whole different generation. It's a whole different. And I believe after this, we're going to be so different in how we approach others. So take this time to learn from one another, teach, and share. Finally, I got you live. You look beautiful. Oh, thank you, Giselle John. Um, we've been talking about being confined, and I know you're dancing with the children. You're learning from them. They're learning from you. Those are all beautiful. And I want you to go to YouTube because your kids will benefit from this 18 year old gem. His name is Caleb Maddox, C-A-L-E-B Maddox. This guy at 18, he is rocking the world for children and teenagers, giving them boosts in self-confidence and everything else. So the questions, that I ask my clients when they say, I love you, I care for you, everything to their loved ones. What about me do you love? What about me do you like? Because love does not change. You know, I can love someone but not like what they do, what they say. Remember that. And let your children know, I love you. But your behavior, your actions, or what you say is something that I did not care for. And that's what I do not like. My love does not change. And we cannot instill that enough with our parents, with our lovers, with our children. When we love it's our love does not necessarily mean they love us the same way. So I love 
you is because of my love. And I don't like the way you speak to me or the way you behave with your daughter, with your sister, with anything. And that's coming to communication and learning how to be curious about one another. Caleb Maddox, got it. I think it's double X if I am not mistaken. Uh, I am watching you with my tears rolling down. I just lost my dog. Oh, Sedajan, I am so, so sad. I know what you are feeling. I know. Um, I had to put three of my dogs down. I know exactly what it feels. It's like a part of your heart goes with them. But you were your dog's world. And their voice, their sound, everything is everywhere. Your doggy is gone, not lost. You never lose. You don't lose when it's pure love, pure joy. And it's one of the things, especially nowadays, we need to share that and let your loved ones know there is no way you can lose my love. That's consistent. We may come out of love with people, especially lovers, loved ones. We fall out of love or the love is not the same, but we never lose the love. Love is there, shared, given, or it's drifting and it goes somewhere else. But it's not lost. It just shifts from one energy to somewhere else. Faguhi, Chilagarian, Ardi, Lasif, baby, you will learn so much. Oh, thank you for sharing, for saying we just lost capitalism too. Also, very sad. Well, I respect your opinion and thank you for sharing. Uh, I like to say that too has shifted. I don't think it's lost. Everything is shifting. I think globally there is a big shift coming and even people who do not have their constant job or profession have been let go. Something else is shifting. So we are in for a bigger energy, bigger things happening. And this is the exact time. Instead of putting our head down and say, I can't see, I don't see, this is the best time to ask questions, hard questions within your own household, what they believe, what they want, how do they see the future, and what they think is the best for themselves and for you. So, I think today's message is be curious, ask questions, and be open for the answers without analyzing, judging, and criticizing. Don't go, oh, really, is that how you think of me? But is that how I come across? Because we can learn about ourselves, our strengths and weaknesses, by the only one without putting us down, without judging, analyzing, and criticizing. And if they do, time out. 
This is not the way to speak. This is not the way to share. So in the old days, in the Indian days, they used to put a stick. And every time they would spin. And when the head of the stick was pointing to the person, was the only person who was allowed to speak, that was their time. And they, they, you can even do the same thing with your children and have a family game and give that person three minutes, three minutes, everyone silent. And that person has three minutes or even one minute because three minutes sometimes is very long time. One minute for them to share and speak or you come up with a question. Ah, here's a game you can do. Bring a box and write questions, all kinds of questions, any question that you want. And you put it in papers and put it in that box, right? And then come together, pull a question. It's the question game. And every single day you can do this and everyone can come up with a brand new question. And it can be directed to one person or a question to all. And that person has to answer it or everybody has one minute, point the stick, to answer that question. That in itself gives respect, allows the other person to have a voice and share and speak what they think, what they feel with no judgment. And that means what I say is not for you to get defensive or hurt or offended, but this is how I see it. This is how I feel. Not what you did, what you say is, this is how I felt when I heard this. This is how I got hurt when you did this. It's about how it affected you, not what they did. Two different ways of coming and speaking and sharing. I hope this was beneficial. Until next week, um, I bid you goodbye, but I'm going to take one minute and see if there is any questions here that I can answer. Right here, ask away. Okay. We have to remember to love each other and help each other. Yes, those are hard times. And so many are in need. So many are in need of our help. And in closing, I would like to close with a small little prayer. A prayer that I am thankful for all of you being here. That I have a roof over my head. That I am connected to you. Through this communication, I am grateful for this technology. I am grateful to every single morning that I get up and I stretch, I can. I am grateful to my family. I am grateful to be able to hold space for someone else. I am grateful to this incredible body of mine that I can digest food that I have food on my table. I am grateful to all who put their life in danger and they extend their life to go and help someone else. And that's from the leaders of this country to the leaders that we believe in to the leaders from your household and being a leader 
to your own self. Recognizing that the first person that you need to care for is your immediate self, your immediate home. And by being grateful, good, bad, right, wrong, up, down, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we have right, left, right wing, left wing. It doesn't matter what religion, race, color, gender we are today. We are one. You see, M, E. And if you flip it over becomes W, E. And that is where we are today. Being grateful to the we. Every single me together is flip over we. And for that, we must be grateful. The weeness, oneness, kindness, gentleness of the me that is you, of the we that is part of me. For that, I thank you. God bless you. And may the universal light surround and protect you. If you ask any questions after, even message me, I will respond. If I can be of help, I am here. Thank you. Hi, Huri John. Hi, Vart. Hi, Armina John. And uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye. God bless. Mm -hmm.